Welcome to Nobilis Erotica, episode 358. I am your host, Nobilis Reed. This episode of Nobilis Erotica is sponsored by the generous patronage of Nobilis Erotica listeners. If you'd like to help out paying the authors and voices that create these stories, visit patreon.com slash nobilis. And if you're already a patron, thank you so much for your help. This month, we have reached 23 patrons, gaining one from last month. It's progress, but it's going to take a while to get to 100, which is the point where I'll be able to provide an illustration for each patron-funded story. This week, I'm pleased to present Layla by Elizabeth Reeve. Elizabeth lives in the Sonoran Desert with her husband, their two little boys, and an increasingly disgruntled cat. When she's not writing, or chasing small children and trying to clean their faces, Elizabeth likes to read, complain about genre television, and sew amusing animal hats. You can find her website at elizabethreeve.com. Our narrator is Honey Rambler, who narrated the superhero story Pow Bash Yes Yes for us back in episode 331. You can find her on Twitter as at Honey Rambler. Here we go. Leela by Elizabeth Reeve I had assumed that lesbians in literature would be an easy A. I'm a lesbian. I like to read, and I need another humanities course to fill the last of my general education requirements. But after spending three nights in a row at the library trying to find sources for my term paper, I was starting to wish I had chosen a different class. I was staring at the catalog search screen for the 50th time, trying to figure out where I'd gone wrong with my key words, when I heard a soft, husky voice. You look like you need help. I looked up. There was a woman standing behind me with one eyebrow raised. She had gorgeous blonde hair hanging in soft, shiny waves down past her shoulders. When I was a kid, I had desperately wished I was blonde, but my mother never let me bleach my hair. I finally tried it in my first year of college and discovered that I actually preferred myself as a brunette. Turns out, I didn't want to be blonde so much as I wanted to sleep with blondes. I still haven't brought that one up with Mom yet. I realized I was staring. I'm sorry, I stammered. You startled me. I thought I was alone up here. The library's never really empty, she said mildly. Her lips quirked at one corner, like her eyebrow. What are you looking for? Vampires. Both her eyebrows were raised now, and I blushed, quickly adding, I mean vampire stories. And analysis. I'm doing a paper for a class on Carmilla. Do you know it? Ah, Garmila, of course. The woman nodded and leaned past me to use the keyboard, her body curving around mine. Her perfume surrounded me, something exotic and floral with just a hint of musk, and one thick lock of her hair tumbled down over her shoulder and brushed the side of my face. I closed my eyes and breathed her in deep as though her scent could fill my body. I was suddenly exquisitely conscious of my own breasts, their weight, the way they were cradled in my bra. I was wearing a t-shirt and jeans, and under that, the plainest, most boring underwear possible. But I was keenly aware of the texture of the stretch cotton weave of my bra against my nipples, of the way the seam of my jeans rested almost, but not quite, over my clitoris. There you are, the woman said. My eyes snapped open and I blinked a few times, embarrassed. Here was this stranger being so helpful, and I was just sitting there getting wet over her perfume. Well, not just her perfume. Her, with her pale hair, full red-painted lips, and bright green eyes. Green eyes with elegant eyebrows above them, raising again as she waited for me to respond to her instead of staring like a jerk. Thanks, I said. I made myself look away from her and back to my screen. It was full of information now, titles and authors and call numbers ready for my perusal. I grinned. Really, thanks so much. I appreciate your help, Ms. Call me Leela, she said, offering her hand. I shook it. I'm Megan. Megan. The handshake was lasting a long time. You have beautiful skin. My eyes widened with surprise, just as though I hadn't been cataloging all of her gorgeous features in my own pervy mind, 
and I dropped her hand. I, uh, I should check some of these out and head home before it gets any later. Of course, Leela said. Good luck with your paper. I couldn't help it. I stared some more as she walked away. That night, I dreamed. I was in my room, in my bed, wearing a sheer white nightgown that was nothing like the boxers and t-shirt that I remembered putting on. The gown shifted as I sat up, sliding coolly across my skin, and I marveled at how different my bedroom can look by candlelight. I didn't even own any candles. The flame flickered as a breeze played through the room, and I looked to the open window and the woman silhouetted there against the moonlight. Leela, I said. Her laughter was low and throaty. Yes, may I come in? Yes. She went into my room, obviously, but I parted my knees as I nodded my acceptance, making further invitation. She crossed the room quickly, though she didn't seem to hurry. She was so graceful. She knelt between my thighs and kissed me, her fingers stroking against my face, my neck, pushing at the straps of my nightgown until it slid down over my shoulders, bearing my breasts. I moaned as she released my lips, bending her head to lap at the skin of my throat. She pressed a kiss onto my clavicle and then ran her tongue between my breasts before turning to capture one nipple delicately between her teeth. She looked up at me, watching my face as she slowly, tenderly bit down and I woke up sweating with my hand between my thighs. I didn't really need any more sources for my term paper, but I went back to the library that weekend anyway. I browsed the stacks for a while, starting on the fifth floor where I'd been when Leela approached me the first time. There was no sign of her. I killed an hour, nearly two, picking up books and flipping through them before putting them back on their shelves. I wasn't really looking at any of them, my eyes sliding right over blocks of text and illustrations alike, scanning the aisles as I looked for a hint of shining hair. I'd given up and decided to go home, and then maybe out to a bar or something like a normal college student, when I heard her voice. Megan, hunting for vampires again? I spun around, nearly dropping the latest book I'd been not looking at. No, I shook my head, then nodded. I mean, yes, She looked at me, probably waiting for me to say something sensible. I mean, I have enough material for my paper, and thank you again, by the way, for your help with that. But I wanted to ask you out. No more, for myself. A thirst like that should be rewarded, Leela said, smiling slowly. Let me help you. I smiled back and said, please. What do you want to know? I said the first thing that came to mind. Dreams. In the story, Laura has dreams about Carmilla, and that's where some of the uh, eroticism happens. The metaphorical penetration and so on. Not entirely metaphorical, Leela pointed out. And of course, lesbian sexuality isn't necessarily dependent on penetration. I grinned. This is what I was writing my paper about, and I didn't mind having a chance to show off a little. Right, no, but... But it was written in 1872, and by a man. And most of the action, as it were, is veiled references. Lots of hand-holding, standing in for heavy petting. That kind of thing. Leela laughed. I like the way you phrased that. But it sounds like you've taken everything you need from the story already. No, I said quickly. I still want, uh, you. More of the background. Context. Carmilla was one of the very first vampire stories, as we recognize them now. So the idea about what vampirism is had to come from somewhere else. Like, the thing with the dreams. That wasn't part of the folkloric background, was it? Ah, what you want is succubi, I think, Leela said, nodding decisively. She led the way toward one of the computers located near the elevators, and bent to type some information into the keyword search bar. I tried not to stare at her hips and ass as she walked, and mostly failed. Her waist wasn't narrow exactly, but it was trim, and her hips were lush and full, 
her ass rounded above thighs that I could see were shapely under the thin material of her skirt as it pulled against her legs. When she leaned down to type, I wanted to step up close behind her, press my body against hers, feel a little of what it might be like to do her from behind with a strap on. The penetration I wanted definitely wasn't metaphorical, but I wanted so much more than that. I wanted to taste her on my tongue, listen to her scream her climax under my mouth, feel her legs trembling when they'd rest hooked over my shoulders. I wanted to suck and lick her tits while she rode my thigh. My nipples were hard, rubbing against my bra, laced today. I had been feeling sexy, and I could feel the dampness of my satin panties sliding against my labia as I shifted my weight. I wanted to do it right then and there, press myself against her back and reach around to caress her breasts, offer to climb under her skirt and go down on her where we stood next to the photocopiers. Here's what you want, she said, and I almost said, yes, yes, I want it, take off your blouse. She was gesturing at the computer screen, of course. I could feel my face getting hot, even as my panties got wetter and wetter. There was no way I could go through with asking her out now. But there was a nice, long list of titles. Maybe I'd be able to say I needed help finding some of them in a day or two. It would give me an excuse to seek her out again, and a chance to compose myself a little before my next attempt. Right that minute, I needed to rush home and give my best dildo a workout. I dreamed again. Of course I did. Carmila and the reading on Succubide that I'd done even though I didn't need to, and Leela, gorgeous Leela, were a heady combination. The next time, it started with a cat, a regal feline almost the size of a panther, but tawny gold with intelligent bright green eyes. She walked straight through my closed bedroom door, and I watched her do it from where I lay on the bed, wearing a silk teddy the like of which I've never seen before, much less owned. I examined myself curiously. The cream-colored silk was pale enough that the pink areolas of my nipples showed through as dark shadows. I pinched one through the fabric and shivered at the sensation. Lace edged the lingerie and rubbed against the tops of my breasts and my inner thighs in a tantalizing way as I moved on the bed, shifting to give the cat room when she jumped up beside me. Leela, I said. This is taking the references to Carmilla almost too seriously, don't you think? The cat purred, a deep rumbling that seemed to move through my body, radiating out from my clit like the waves from my favorite bullet vibe. She rubbed her face against my knee, pushing her broad head between my thighs. Her rough tongue over the silk felt amazing, but I put one hand between her velvety ears and pushed her away. This is too weird for me if you're a cat. I said. I mean, I know you're not, but it's just... Leela's husky laugh filled the room before she'd finished changing shape. Is this better? She asked, crouched between my legs and reaching out to pet the wet silk above my clitoris with her fingertips. Fuck, yes! I moaned as she touched me, throwing my head back and reveling in the sensation. Ever since the early days of exploring my own sexuality... I'd always wanted to be the more active, dominant partner. I wore the silicone cock, metaphorical and otherwise, getting half of my pleasure from giving it to the other woman, watching her come apart under me. But there was something about Dream Leela that made me want to lie back and take it, be the one seduced, let her drive. Fuck me, I said. Take me. She laughed again her mouth pressed to my thigh, and the vibration felt like the big cat's purring. Ask me properly. Really ask me, and I will. I looked down at her and opened my mouth, wanting to beg, wanting to know what properly meant, and woke up. I went back to the library the next day, but stopped at the help desk instead of taking the elevator straight up to the fifth floor. The work-study student, sitting behind the desk, was a cute redhead with dimples that flashed when she smiled, but I couldn't have cared less. "'Can I help you?' she asked, her voice disappointingly average. "'Is Leela working today?' 
She looked at me blankly. Leela? The tiny hairs on the back of my neck prickled. The dreams had felt so real, even... No, especially the parts that couldn't be. Leela biting my breast, taking the form of a cat. I had teased her about adhering too closely to Carmilla's formula. But it wasn't just because it was a story I was thinking about a lot lately, was it? I remembered something from the reading I'd been doing about how dreams and vampire narratives were a way of making the sexual aspects of the stories safe. If the heroine thought she was dreaming, nothing was her fault. As long as she was passively accepting the vampire's attention, she was still virginal, still a good, presumably heterosexual girl. She wasn't in control. It didn't count. It wasn't real. As long as she told herself they were just dreams. I thought I knew then how the conversation with the girl at the help desk was going to end, but I kept going. Yes, Leela, tall, blonde. She's been helping me with the paper. Doesn't ring a bell, the girl said. But let me check the shift list. Could just be someone I haven't met. She typed some information into her terminal, then frowned and entered it again before looking up at me and shaking her head. I'm sorry, there's no Leela here. Could it be Lily? There's a lily, but she's not blonde. Sorry, I made myself smile. I must have misunderstood something. Thanks for your help. I walk away, the fake smile straining my cheeks until they ached. Of course she wasn't on the shift list. She probably wasn't on any list. Oh, it was tempting to assume that she just wasn't a librarian. She could be some kind of a book enthusiast who got her kicks by helping students with their research papers, maybe. But I knew that wasn't it. And I knew I wanted to see her again anyway. In the dream, I was naked and Leela wore red. The color blazed against her pale skin and hair, made her painted lips seem even fuller and more kissable. So I kissed her pulled her down onto the bed beside me and rolled her over, pinned her with my body stretched over hers. She laughed, delighted, and I kissed her again and again, all over her face, her neck, the tops of her breasts where they were exposed by the gauzy material of her camisole. She bent one knee, slipping her bare thigh between my legs, and I rocked down onto it, ground myself against her even as I slid one hand beneath the waistband of her panties. She was slick under my fingertips, parting easily before me as I dipped inside. Leela, I murmured against her hair. I slid two fingers inside her wet heat and pressed the heel of my palm over her clit. Leela, Leela, why me? She arched under me, panting, but her voice was steady when she answered. You were the one who called for me, Megan, not the other way around. Her answer made as much sense as anything else. I crooked my finger inside her, seeking out her G-spot. What do you want? You, she breathed. I took my hand away from her long enough to strip her panties off and fumble in my bedside drawer for a fingertip vibe, and then I was on her again, in her again, fucking her with my fingers while my thumb buzzed over her clit. I licked and sucked at the skin between her breasts, tugged at the neckline of her camisole with my teeth. Her nipples were tight and hard, and I sucked one into my mouth, teased it with the tip of my tongue. Maybe I had called her. Maybe it was something I did without realizing, some whispered desire. Hell, maybe it was the keyword searches. Whatever. It was her turn to cry out for me. I sucked harder on her nipple, grazed it with my teeth before letting go and turning my attention to her other breast. I licked and nibbled, pressed open-mouthed kisses to her pale skin, and pushed her higher and higher with the hand between her legs. I left her breasts with a parting swipe of my tongue, across both peaks, then kissed her lips. I stretched over her, covering her again wanting to feel her against the length of my body. Leela put her mouth to my throat, and I turned my head, bared my neck with a needy moan. I could still feel her body clenching around my hand when I woke up. 
I found her on the fifth floor just after midnight. Her back was turned, and she was looking out the window. She left no reflection on the glass. Leela. She smiled when she turned. Megan. Looking for vampires again? Just one, I said. When she laughed, I saw her fangs. And there you have it. Now, we have an author's note. Hi, this is Elizabeth Reeve. Uh, I hope you enjoyed Layla. Um, Carmilla, which is referenced pretty extensively, is a, a real text that you can really read. It's in the public domain, so you can find it all kinds of places, and it's been adapted a gajillion times. Um, and uh, if you were interested in vampires and historical literature, you really should, because it's a pretty fascinating early look at a vampire mythos and ideas, and it's also like super, super lesbian. Um, the penetration is not necessarily metaphorical. Uh, there's lots of sexual overtones. It's really interesting. I'm not sure that I would say it's actually sexy, um, but it's, it's worth checking out. It's interesting. Um, you may have guessed from Layla, and if you've read some of my other work, I was a lit major when I was in college. And uh, Layla and a story that I wrote that's about Mary Bennett accidentally summoning an incubus, uh, a woman of uncommon accomplishment, are sort of, I think of them as kind of my love letters to the canon of English literature. And uh, I really enjoyed reading literature critically, and it turns out that I really enjoy writing sort of bizarre pseudo-fanfic also. So I'm really glad that there are people out there who like reading it or listening to it. I don't currently have any plans to write fanfic based on Dickens, but we never know. So I guess we'll see in the future. So, did you like this story? Tell me what you think by calling the voicemail line, sending an email, or finding me on Twitter. All those ways to contact me can be found on the podcast website at nobilis.libsyn.com. Patrons of the Nobilis Erotica podcast enjoy monthly episodes of my fantasy breast expansion serial, Bra of Holding. And now that Patreon has activated RSS feeds for audio uploads, you can get these episodes as easily as you get this one by signing up as a patron at patreon.com slash nobilis. As soon as you sign up, you'll get an RSS feed address that you can plug right into your podcatcher. You have been listening to the Nobilis Erotica podcast. The music is composed and performed by Mass Relay. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Until next time, listen hard.